Uh, we're ready to begin. Welcome to the T's interim meeting that is sort of in place of our ITF 107. Um, I'm Lou Berger. Um, Hazan Biram is uh, running the, the slides, co chair. I think we have our uh, secretary, Matt, online, or at least if he's not here yet, he will be here. Yeah, great, cool. No, I'm here. Uh, thanks. Um, as always, this is a IETF meeting, so we have the IETF note well. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so, some administrative pieces, and hopefully, this ended up in the chat that everyone can see. The slides are all posted. Um, at the this interim link, um, the uh, Etherpad, please join the Etherpad. It's actually really important this time. And at least add your name to the end. That's where our virtual blue sheet exists. And once you're there, please um, stay around and add any notes to each of the um, uh, each of the slots. Uh, you don't have to take notes on what uh, is being presented on the slides. Just the conversation that happens afterwards. Appreciate your contribution there. And by the way, thank you very much for showing for the interim. <clears throat> for the WebEx chat, we'd like to limit that just for queue control. So if you want to be in the queue, say plus queue. If you want to leave the queue, say minus queue. Um, uh, uh, and if you want to chat at each other, um, we'll, we'll, we're going to continue to use Jabber uh, for that. The Jabber information is uh, it's the usual room you can find it at the top of the etherpad if you're looking for it uh, next please so what's going on with uh, documents in the working group we had one new rfc so that's uh, really nice to see um, always good to produce documents that is why we're here uh, we have a couple of documents in the editor queue some of them are moving a little slower than we'd like but they're they're um, they are moving through um, the, you know, the, the RFC editors processing. We don't have any new documents uh, to the ISG, and we have uh, no new adoptions or errata. Yeah. Our agenda is unchanged from what's posted. What we try to do is um, focus on uh, what's happening, updates from the design teams and what's going on there and uh, talk about uh, new things that the working group may decide to, to work on. For regular um, working group documents that are progressing, we ask to do a status to the list as we usually do. And unlike usual, we're not gonna have our normal working group discussions on uh, active documents. We wanna have those on the list. And if there's sufficient um, discussion on a particular topic, we can hold another interim on just that specific topic. Uh, we are gonna run through what was sent to the list at a high level, um, Pavan's gonna do that next. Okay, uh, next slide, please. There was one liaison that was actually sent. Uh, this was joint work with, a, I should have listed the other working groups in particular, uh, CCAMP took the lead on the response, so we appreciate that. So uh, that was one outgoing liaison, nothing incoming, next. As always, um, we have our formal IPR process. That's just our standard reminder. Next. Um, so as I talked about, we, in addition to our normal use of the working group mail list, we really are, are for, uh, during this time where we're not meeting face to face, we think that the list is even more important and we really want to encourage um, discussion on, as I said before, on working group documents, but also new documents. If you have something new that you think is, that you want the working group to pay attention to, please discuss it on the list. Don't wait for the next face-to-face -face meeting. Don't wait for the next interim. Uh, bring it up and say, hey, this is the topic, who's interested, and, and try to generate some interest uh, and understanding of what it is that you wanna work on. So that's it. Uh, I had one point I was gonna add, but of course I have forgotten that. Um, I will be watching Jabber. So um, uh, if you want to speak, uh, at, speak at the mic, 
Um, uh, remember to uh, say plus Q minus Q in WebEx. If you want something um, said, repeated jabber at Mike for some reason, maybe you don't have audio, uh, just put like at Mike in front of it in the, in the jabber uh, window. That's it uh, for me. Uh, Pavan, over to you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. I uh, hope everyone is doing great. Uh, I do appreciate uh, all for taking the time out to join this virtual session during these difficult times. My name is Pavan Biram. I'm the other co-chair for this working group. And as Lou mentioned, I'll quickly uh, walk through the status of uh, some of the working group documents. Uh, we currently have 19 working group documents with us. All of them are listed here. Uh, as Lou mentioned, none of these are on the agenda for today's session. Uh, we had requested the authors of the working group documents to send in the status to the list. Um, thanks to everyone who sent those in. The documents for which we haven't received any status updates are suffixed with an asterisk on the slide. Uh, we do request uh, those authors to uh, send out uh, the status to the list. Uh, we have one document in an expired state, uh, and I have requested the authors of that document to send an update on their plans for reviving this. That's the RSVP RMR extension document. Uh, the documents that are colored green on this slide have uh, all had an update or two made since the last meeting. So please do go through uh, the status updates as well as the latest set of changes for each of these and um, reach out to the respective authors if you have any questions or comments or concerns. Um, the Authors of some of these documents would also be starting dedicated threads on the list to discuss focused open items. Uh, the authors of the T service mapping document, for instance, uh, they promised to start a, a thread discussing the mapping to the L2, L3 uh, network models. Uh, please do chime in with your thoughts and opinions regarding that on the list. Um, there are also a couple of documents for which the authors have claimed that the document is working group last call ready. One is the PC native IP document, and the other is the RSVP Yang document. Uh, Lou and I will take a closer look at these after this session and then start the process for the next step uh, based on a review. Uh, in the meantime, it would be useful if we could get more reviews for these documents. Um, there are also a couple of Yang documents for which the authors are requesting a Yang doctor's review. We will get the process rolling for those as well. Uh, you can find the complete set of collated status updates on the remainder of this deck. Uh, I will not go through each of these individually here. You can go over them in leisure. Uh, if there are any questions regarding uh, the working group documents, uh, we can take them now. Any questions? Uh, Adrian's in queue. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, PCCC use cases. I thought that we had uh, come to the conclusion. You won't find it in the list. Oh, you will find it in the list. Okay. Um, yeah, the, this continues to be a living document uh, and no intention to publish as an RSC. So uh, I don't know how how we actually track that. And maybe it's worth stuffing something in the data tracker. Uh, to say that, or perhaps it should go in the abstract of the document, just so that we don't keep uh, coming back to it and saying, what's the status? Uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, we we did discuss this in uh, the earlier meetings, and I guess the uh, read from the working group then was that we would keep it uh, as active as long as uh, people want to discuss the use cases, uh, and then uh, we'll take a call on the fate of this at a later stage. Uh, I mean, we could continue doing that or, yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, if, if there's something in the, at the beginning of the document in the abstract, I think that would make things clear for uh, folks who don't have uh, the history of this document. like we don't have anyone else in queue. Okay. Um, Adrian, you're next on the agenda. Ray. Do I have to stand in the pink square? Uh, please do stand in the imaginary pink square. 
Right, so uh, I'll stop talking. Um, uh, those with long memories will remember that um, we set up a design team to look at uh, revising RFC 3272. Uh, and those with incredibly long memories will remember that this was a document written around the time of uh, RSVPTE and MPLSTE describing um, the background and the tools for traffic engineering in the internet. Uh, so slide. Um, so since uh, 3272 was uh, first published, obviously a, a huge amount has happened, uh, especially around TE uh, and um, the, uh, the mechanisms that we use uh, have developed substantially. We're also seeing um, that quite a few working groups are using the term TE with their best base reference being 3272, which really uh, isn't suitable for that purpose. So the design team is uh, chartered to do a complete revision, uh, obviously using a lot of the old text, but updating definitions, adding new text where there are new technologies, uh, streamlining the historical material where streamlining is a euphemism for deleting uh, and tidying up the references, which were quite uh, a mess. Slide. So um, just to, to make the point that the, this issue is very much alive, I did a quick look for recent discussions of the term TE uh, in the routing area, and I came up with this list of uh, 10 working groups that are all mentioning TE in one way or another. Uh, and to some extent, uh, and excusably, making their own definition of what they mean by TE according to their circumstances. And the excuse is that they don't really have anything to point to as a, as a decent, stable reference. Um, so, we need to address what does everyone mean when they say traffic engineering? Are they all talking about the same thing? Do they mean all of TE or just some aspects of TE? Um, uh, and that, that one turns out to be quite important. So, some people may mean traffic steering, some people may mean resource reservation, some may mean network planning, uh, and um, the clarity is missing. There's also uh, um, a degree to which we tend to reinvent tools and techniques. I think that's because we're excitable engineers and it's much more fun to write a new tool than it is to read an old RFC. Um, now, possibly that doesn't matter if you're off in, um, say, IoT world and you uh, do some uh, new tools. Maybe there's no concern about the overlap, but possibly we can reduce effort and uh, benefit from commonality of, of tools. Slide. So the process um, we are using to revise the, the draft um, is, uh, is no longer GitHub and Cramdown. We, we decided to use that initially and turned out we were all way too old. So we're using um, the normal IETF process where contributors propose changes um, and uh, I act as editor and I merge the changes and post new revisions. Um, that is just so much like everyday use. Yes, yeah, thanks, new side. So where have we got to? Um, Note uh, first that we have not changed the document title. So this is still overview and principles of internet traffic engineering. And that the, the inclusion of the word internet there, I think is pretty important. So um, stuff that is off in private networks or 
maybe deep in underlay networks is not so uh, relevant. Uh, we're currently at revision 09, and um, we've had uh, just four of us make substantive contributions to the document. Um, uh, only three of those actually from the original design team. Uh, Gert uh, came along and did some really helpful work as well. Uh, what have we done? Well, we've turned the old RFC from um, text into XML. We've restructured quite a bit, moving uh, the sections around. Uh, and we've thrown out a lot of legacy material, big bits and little bits. Little bits are things like CRLDP. Larger bits are that we probably don't need to talk about uh, ATM in much detail anymore. Um, we've come up with uh, a lot of new sections um, for the new technologies. Um, uh, and some of those are still empty. Uh, probably some of those sections are still missing. So that's a good way that people can contribute either by just identifying missing sections or by suggesting text. Um, but some of those new sections we have made a first attempt at, at filling in. And as I said before, we did quite a, a good piece of uh, bashing on the references. Next slide. So what do we need to do? I think there are two things going on here. There's lots that we could do in terms of polishing and scrubbing, but there are some things that are actually critical and we, we need to do. Uh, first, as I mentioned, the title says Internet Traffic Engineering. We need to be comfortable as a working group that we, we understand what Internet means in this context, what we're limited to, and what we include when we say it. Uh, we need to continue to prune the text. I think the document is still about 30% too long. Um, it's interesting to note that uh, we've remained about stable through all 10 versions uh, by deleting text to match what we've been adding, but we haven't really managed to cut down the quantity. Uh, fill in empty sections and add new sections, as I mentioned before. And then probably the most important thing is to widely discuss and agree the core terminology. So that's discussed within the, the working group, but uh, also within the, across the whole area, and maybe even more widely in the IETF. So what is TE? Next slide. Uh, the current draft has uh, really quite a lot of froth to define internet traffic engineering. It's one and a half pages. Um, which is by no means concise and pithy. Uh, I've quoted maybe the most um, relevant paragraph from that, but even this is, uh, is, is very open-ended as a definition. It sort of says traffic engineering is all that stuff that you do when you do traffic engineering. Um, so it may help us to really uh, refine and nail down terminology in, in probably a new section, breaking out the component functions um, with just single paragraph uh, definitions. And this list is simply uh, a, a, a list for discussion. It's to kick things off. If I was to start writing that section today, I would probably take this list, but I might end up with something else. And then at the end of that, we have to define for ourselves whether traffic engineering means doing all of these things, doing some of them, uh, or doing at least one of them. Uh, and maybe it, it will help us to say that actually traffic engineering is uh, a concept, but we need to use the more precise terms everywhere we talk about it. Next slide. 
So what are we going to do next? Um, I think that there are three options. Um, we could just say, look, this is too much work. Uh, we're making very slow progress. Uh, let's give up. Um, although, of course, there's no such thing as giving up in the IETF uh, because anyone can pick up a, drop, a document and work on it. We could continue to work on the document using the current scheme, which is to say uh, it's an individual submission, work continues as normal, um, and everyone is welcome to contribute. At the moment, we're using a mailing list which has an open archive, so everyone can see uh, what's going on there. But um, uh, apart from that, it's open for everybody to participate. And we could probably say that the design team has completed its job. Uh, and um, so this is an individual draft with open contribution. Or thirdly, we could take that a step further and adopt the draft as a starting point for um, more work in the working group, formally close the design team, and by having a working group draft, have something a bit more solid that uh, other working groups can point to. Um, and if we do option three, uh, obviously this would be a good time to start asking people in other working groups who are probably not following this work what their opinions are. And I think at this point, I see Lou standing at the microphone. I actually came up a while ago, but that's okay. Uh, oh, no, I still see you standing there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No worries. Um, thanks. So I actually wanted to make a comment earlier as a contributor. Um, we've lost the slides, but the, on the what is TE, uh, I think you really hit it because the, um, having a short definition that other working groups can look at is really helpful. I ran into this in the beer working group where um, they have in their charter to do beer traffic engineering and weren't really doing traffic engineering, so have decided to instead call it tree engineering. But I, I did volunteer to write a, a, short, sent a short paragraph on how they could make their or section on how do they could make their document really be traffic engineering. And in so doing, I think came up with some uh, a short definition that we can adopt to start that section as what is TE um, again as a contributor. Uh, what's the best way to send that to you to contribute that? Uh, e email, um, handwritten on vellum. Yeah, I have it handwritten in a notebook. Actually, um, I can take a picture and send it. Yeah, well, uh, no, I can't. I, I can't read your writing. We've established that for years. Um, so, um, raw text is just fine. Uh, to you, to the to the design list, to the working group list. What do you think? I think today send it to the design list, but it depends on which next steps we take um, and exactly when you send it. Okay. Um, I'll try to do it by the weekend. How's that? Yeah. So that's um, thank weekend. you. That's a that's a, a normal promise in the design team. Great. So something um, you, you just said um, struck me, and uh, I think that's for Deborah's on the call and any other ADs as well. It is worth noting then when we charter new working groups uh, and we say something glibly like we will do traffic engineering in this working group, we have to go a bit further and say what we mean by traffic engineering. Well, uh, they just decided that the work charter doesn't matter and they'll, use, they'll call it tree engineering. Uh, whatever, yes. Right. Maybe that's for the ISG. To it is we did have in the charter that they were, I forget the exact sentences, but they were to um, collaborate with T's. But the difficulty here is that once it was pointed out to them, it's not a true definition of TE, they decided to come up with their own acronym, tree engineering. Then. <laughs> so that, that's the conflict there. From, from the, this document's perspective, having a brief, uh, uh, something concise that other working groups can look at and say, this is really what they have to, you have to focus on these concepts. And if you, if they want to do it, yeah, there's a whole slew of details behind it, which is the rest of the document. Uh, but something that's um, shorter than, you know, a um, hundred page document is, is uh, really good. So I, you know, I think you've raised the, the perfect point in that what is TE slide. Um, 
Pavan, do you want to talk with chair hat on about the document about the, the last question? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, adoption seems like a, a the option that uh, that seems more most viable. Um, so, do, uh, do you want uh, we we can get started uh, the process after this session? That would be fine. Can I caution you about the IPR poll that you have um, said you might do? Um, that if you if you count all of the design team as contributors, and worse than that, if you count all of the people who contributed to the original RFC as contributors, you'll still be doing an IPR poll in um, oh, I don't know two years time. Yeah. How you handle that's up to you, but I just thought I'd flag it. So, Adrian, from the existing the, the, the existing authors, we can assume that they abide by the um, uh, um, by the IPR statement in the document that was published. So, I for the old text, you don't have to repull those authors. But anyone who contributed to the new work um, does, the, and I mean, actually wrote text. Uh, or did something that it resulted in text. We need to have those people called out in some way. And, you know, we'll have to defer to you uh, and, and the other authors to, to figure out how to identi identify those. Uh, the traditional way we do that is, you know, people that are part of a design team, but didn't really do the things that translate to text, they go in the acknowledgements um, uh, or not at all, that's your call. Uh, but people who actually did the uh, contribution uh, show up either as an author or in the contributor section. So if you can make that distinction, um, and maybe yeah, I don't know if it's already there that way. I didn't look, uh, or if you need a new revision to make that, that would be really great because then we can delineate who, who really is um, responsible for the, the the content and needs it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll do a a, a new spin before you start maybe it up. Wait until uh, Monday to see if I actually send you something worthwhile. Uh, okay. That's a, well, that, that's revisions a, revisions are cheap, a, Lou. Let's say again. Revisions are cheap. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? Moving on, right? So I think uh, Yari, you're going to start on the uh, slicing design team. Is that right? Yeah. If you can go to slide number two, and can you hear me all right? Can you confirm that you can see the slides? I can see the slides. Oops. Now it's doing something funny. Yeah. Now we go. Good. Um, so we have a um, a little bit of time here to talk about uh, network slicing. And uh, I'm going to start. My name is Yari Ark. I'm going to start with uh, the introduction. And uh, then I'll let uh, Kiran and Eric uh, go through the two drafts that we've actually produced. And uh, we have reserved quite a lot of, of the time for, for discussion. Let's see how much we get of that. I think what we're going to do actually is, is that after both of the drafts, we'll stop for discussion on that topic. And, and then at the end, we'll have some further Further discussion, we could have a discussion on like whether to adopt the drafts, for instance, for the working group. That's that's the ask from the design team, actually, that would like the working group to adopt the drafts. Uh, we can talk about next steps uh, in relation to other work, you know, whether this missing piece is what the working group might actually want the design team to do in the future and so on. Uh, but starting with the design team uh, context, can you go to the next slide? So listening to Adrian's presentation just a moment ago, what I would like to say is that the <laughs> design team has been working on uh, traffic engineering. Um, so, but basically we, we are to develop a framework of providing network slicing using existing IETF traffic engineering and VPN technologies. And um, that's actually a, a sort of a, oops, now we are jumping <laughs> uh, the, 
So, so the, the task that we, we have is slightly difficult. I mean, it's in some sense easy, like, you know, just explain how to use these things and maybe we need to add some things and write documents, but it's made difficult because this is such a hot uh, topic. Can you go one slide back? Oh, no, now we're good, we're good, good, sorry. Um, slide? Slide. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 we are at the right, right place. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a hot topic. So so there's a lot of interest on you know people working on this and and they all you know often want to include many different topics under it. But we've had a very very narrow definition of what we actually are working on. And uh, uh, Eric Eric and Kiran will talk more about that in a bit. Um, one word about the mode of operation in the design team. So sometimes you have these like closed design teams. This is not one of those. So we actually do everything out in the open. We have an open list. People can join. Calls can be joined. Documents are open. Um, and the list of contributors, people who join the calls, is not the same one as, as originally uh, selected members of the design team. So we've been trying to be particularly open. I think that will actually work quite well. And of course, design team just makes proposals. It's up to the working group to decide whether that you want those proposals or some, some variant of them. We also don't do draft authorship based on uh, team membership, obviously, because we have too many people, but rather, you know, who actually wrote text for, for the particular document. So that's, that's how we operate. Next slide, please. So the design team timeline, uh, just uh, flashing this, and apparently some of the graphics is missing, but um, so in uh, ITF 106, we had uh, plans, scope, and some early contributions that we talked about. And now we have uh, initial definitions and framework drafts in front of you. And the hope is that uh, by the next ITF, <laughs> if there is one, uh, we would have a stable draft for uh, from the design team and it'd be a, a proper working group document and, and so on. Next slide, please. And um, the design team um, scope and plan is, is basically, you know, get to the, the basics of, of networking here. Um, explain how to use ex existing ITF transport technologies, TE slash VPN technologies to, to do this, uh, what we call transport slices. Uh, and Kiran will define that in a bit better way in a moment. Um, so we want to do definitions of what, you know, what is this thing that we would like to achieve? Uh, we want to do a framework that describes the overall system, how do the pieces fit together? And then the idea is that there will be, you know, this general framework can be instantiated uh, to use a particular implementation technology because in the ITF, we obviously have a, have a number of diff different technologies. Um, we would also like to talk about some of the use cases. Uh, we don't have much of that in the current documents, but that could be perhaps a future document. And our status is that we published now the two first documents. So there's a document on definitions, a document on the framework. We'll talk about that in a bit. The uh, mapping to particular implementation techniques, uh, any particular extensions that we might need to control different components like an, you know, an northbound interface, for instance. Um, those have, have been discussed, but we don't have a document or, or you know, particular agreement about the approach even in, in, uh, for those things at the moment. We're working on that. Um, and I think, was that the last slide? Can you check? That's the last slide. Yeah, so that's basically the context. Um, and uh, if people have questions now, we can talk about that a little bit. But otherwise, I'll let uh, Kieran continue with the uh, we do actual have substance. Person, we do have one person in queue. Joel, do you want to go now or after the next slot, which is definitions? Definitions would be much better. <laughs> let them present the definitions first. Gotcha. Thanks. OK. All right, so I'll shut up and let Kiran talk. Hi guys, can you hear me? Now we can. Great. 
So the uh, definition part of the transport slice is trying to normalize all the terminology scope and the terms that we use in the context of transport slices. And it is the work of the entire design team. They have contributed at some point or the other in terms of adding, deleting topics and uh, refining the text. Next slide, please. So since we are talking about this document for the first time, this is pretty much the outline and the way in which we have written the document. It has the definitions, some description about it. And since we could not cover everything into the definition, there's a section on uh, characteristics that develops the different aspects of the slices. And finally, we have the structure of the transport slice. Next slide, please. So this definition is uh, not very different from what we had in 107, and it is uh, derived from some of the work that is already going on and has VPN. We tweaked a few things in terms of bringing in the term SLOs and dedicated network resources. So the key keywords here are logical because we wanted to define the slice in a completely independent manner from any technology that is being developed in PE or elsewhere. We just wanted to give a standalone definition for transport slices. We talk a lot about service level objectives because we want to make it easy to attach what kind of characteristics you want from your slide, uh, slices. They should be measurable, quantifiable, and easy to understand uh, when it goes down into the network. And then obviously we talk about topology and endpoints. That means it is not just a very simple one-to-one -one logical wire or anything. We actually look at uh, look at it as an, a logical network in itself. Next slide. And uh, so the first part is the characteristics about the slices. Obviously, a lot of emphasis on service level objectives. And at least from my perspective, the way I see it, we have uh, uh, two kinds of SLOs. One is metric based, where you can clearly say how much you want something like bandwidth latency and so on. And these are the definitions we took from the existing work in IETF RFCs. We did not try to define anything on our, uh, on by ourselves. And uh, we do clarify that these things are unidirectional. So you, it's not, there's no assumption that whether it's going to be bidirectional. And we also clarify that SLOs are required on per link basis, per flow basis, or group of flow basis. So there's some text to describe how SLOs can be defined. Next slide. So the second aspect of SLOs is from the operational perspective. So just defining latency and bandwidth itself is not sufficient. You would also want to say that I want my network to be highly available, reliable. I don't want any packet losses in it. So there should be a way to describe it and what kind of security parameters do you need? So within security, we uh, talk about encryption, admission control or authentication and the isolation characteristics that you should not be able to interfere with other slices or other aspects of the network other flows that are going on in the network. Next slide. And um, there was a lot of discussion on the isolation that some people wanted. It should be a top level SLOs, but we didn't feel very comfortable because it's very hard to define what, uh, what isolation is going to be for a particular SLO. So we came up with a term called resolution of guarantee. In this, we talk about soft guarantees and uh, hard guarantees in terms of, for example, hard guarantee will mean that you have dedicated the resource for or dedicated allocation for that particular SLO. That could be bandwidth, <laughs> bandwidth or latency or a link itself, physical link itself. And soft will be more virtualization that you're still sharing resources with other slices or other aspects of the network. And, um, and the reason we did not want SLO uh, isolation at the top level is because uh, 
we could we cannot guarantee that with isolation you will not see any SLO violations because violations can still happen uh, if there is a failure in the network and you cannot 100% guarantee that there will be absolutely no packet loss. So you need to provide different ways of solving those problems. We have written a lot of text explaining these things in the document in the details so that when you talk about SLOs in the context of transport slices, you have a very good clarity that when a northbound interface is developed, you know how you can add these things into your model. Next slide. So obviously, then an important part of um, slices is the endpoint character endpoints themselves. And we allow those endpoints to be either transport time, your type, your switches or routers, or they can also be uh, some sort of network functions which are related to uh, the, uh, uh, something like DPA fire, firewall. These are the things that you would have in your network and you would want to install in your transport slice to perform different functions specific to your vertical. And again, they can be multi-point to multi-point connectivity patterns. We describe the section on that. Next slide, please. So, and uh, we had some great deal of discussion that what is that connectivity aspect of the transport slice and how is it different from the existing technology, existing TE technologies to be specific? So one thing we say is that a transport slices can connect different types of technologies together. And how do you extend them? So there are two aspects. One is horizontal slice and the vertical slice. In case of horizontal slices, we had a use case that uh, if you have, let's say, segment routing in a particular network and you want to stitch with an L2 VPN segment, how would you do that? So end-to-end -end will become a horizontal slicing solution. Similarly, in a vertical slice, you would like to have something at one level, a slice is created at the optical level, optical layer, and then you want to abstract it up into an IP level. So you would go from lower level to upper levels and you could do that using vertical slices and uh, especially in the case of horizontal slices you may need something like slicing gateways because you need to stitch to different kinds of technologies together so we introduced the term slicing gateway and uh, there is some we have started working on it revived some of the documents and going forward we will show more details about it next slice Slide. And then obviously uh, the structure part of the transport slice only provides some of the terminology that is actually explained in much greater detail in framework document. And the things we talk about is um, transport slice controller or orchestrator. We want that everybody should use that terminology consistently, not in a different manner. So what is the meaning of NBI and SBI in case of SBI uh, in transport slices? That is covered in this section and it is always with reference to transport slice controller. And uh, uh, an important aspect that we bring out is the dual aspect of transport slices. One part is uh, the logical representation, how a customer will ask for the transport slice and then the actual realization in the network. So we could have actually, we can uh, develop the slices in these two parts independently. And what requires in between is the gluing that will happen through NBI and SBI interfaces. Next slide. And then um, obviously it was, this was actually when we started writing the document was our first section where we wanted to say that um, transport slice is just one part of end-to-end -end slice. There may be other slices that are done by other STOs. For example, 5G is a great example where they have RAN slices and core slices. We are not concerned with that. We are only focused on the transport and the connectivity aspects. So we have explained uh, through an example at the bottom of this document so that there is a clarity between what transport slices are versus other slices. Next slide. 
So that was just an overview of the document, what we have covered. We made sure it was consistent with the ongoing work, for example, that the enhanced VPN document is written. We also make sure that the terminology is aligned between framework document in our definition document. And in fact, we use this document as a reference whenever there is a discussion on some SLOs or other characteristic aspects, we say, hey, we have written this in the definition document and you cannot digress from it. So that way, this is serving as a baseline document of how transport slices should evolve. So, and it's been in a pretty stable shape from last one month or so. If you guys think there's something missing, please let us know. And uh, so we are asking for feedback and maybe if possible, work group adoption. Thank you. I think this was my last slide. Uh, we have a few folks uh, lined up in the queue. Uh, Joel, you're first. Okay. Um, first, I recognize a lot of effort went into this and I appreciate the design team's effort. However, there are serious problems with the document as it is. First one I hadn't known until you presented because your description of SLOs at the beginning was fairly reasonable, but does not actually match section 4.1 when, because, for example, there's text about bidirectional measurements in section 4.1, and you specifically said in your opening that it was unidirectional. You need to make sure that the deck, text and your intentions line up. So I'm not going to belabor that. On the rest of this, I to save the chairs from telling me, please send this to the list as well, I am in the middle of composing an email list, an email to the list. It was just complicated enough that I haven't sent it yet. I hope to get it out later today. There are some very serious problems with the text, the, the descriptive text. For example, in your, the resolution text talks about hard versus soft. And as you said in your presentation, it's about, well, you can protect against some kinds of failures and not other kinds of failures. A customer doesn't care. A customer wants a guarantee. He, wants, he knows there has to be some confidence in it. That, no guarantee is perfect, et cetera, but he doesn't care why it was violated. There is no difference from an SLO or SLA perspective between violated because of competing traffic and violated because of device failure, software failure, whatever, backhoe fade. The cust from the customer's point of view, from the user of the slice, and therefore from the abstraction the slice provides, this is a meaningless distinction. And the entire then effort you go to to describe resolution doesn't match the way operators write these agreements. I would expect resolution to correspond to the way operators actually have figured out to write these to deliver services, and it doesn't. Then you get to isolation. Isolation is not a security property because isolation is actually not observable. Isolation is a way. As the document says, this document is supposed to be about how, what is delivered, not how it is delivered. There should be no references to isolation in here. I would suggest removing section 411 completely and removing the reference to isolation from the security section. Because in fact, isolation is not an observable. It is a means of achieving a goal. There are many kinds of isolation that can be used. They deliver useful goals. That's why vendors build isolation technologies and operators use them. But there's lots of different things under that rubric, all of which are unobservable and therefore not part of the definition of the abstraction that we are describing here. And I think it is very important that we focus on that abstraction. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, uh, you made a lot of points and all of them are well accepted. We, for each SLO, we do mention whether they're unidirectional or not. We have not, um, we are not saying it in a generic way. So it is in the document. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, second thing is on isolation. I do agree with you. And that is why it is, it is not observable. And that is the main reason it is not part of our SLO. It is there just as a discussion that what it means. There was Why discuss it at all? Why discuss it at all? It is so not something that this document needs to deal with. There were a lot of members in the design team. They wanted to have this uh, discussion in the in the so, text. One of the 
specific well, it use. It doesn't make it so. It doesn't belong. I personally think it brings a lot of clarity to the document and it is there just as a side discussion. It is not actually part of the SLOs. And some of the interesting examples were where a user may ask for an entire physical link rather than having any shared resource where interference is possible. And that's why the definition of current in terms of hard, hard and soft side slices was an interesting concept to bring it into the document. I think we're at the point on this comment where, um, uh, Joel, we really look forward to seeing the mail that you promised us and knew we would ask. I will deliver it. <laughs> and, and then we should talk through it on, on the list. Uh, I actually have yes. comments also in that discussion, but I'll take it to the list also. Um, so Fine. So, uh, next, you. In, next in queue is Adrian, and we have a couple more that have added to the queue. I, I've so got... you know, you have a deep queue. <laughs> I've got three uh, small points, um, so I'll do them all at once. Uh, first one is, is there a proposal for how to resolve the conflict between uh, definitions in this work and work that is already uh, adopted and progressing in the working group? Second question is about the word transport and um, is, uh, you can answer this easily by saying, oh, yes, we've defined that in the document, but I didn't put it in the slides. But I noticed that the design team task was to talk about network slicing and um, that, that this work appears to have picked up the term transport network slice uh, and uh, IETF transport technologies without um, explaining to me what transport actually means in this context. And the third question is around the term service level objective. And I know that's uh, a term that's grown in popularity in the industry, but I think it means nothing because an objective um, without a guarantee is a wish. Um, and an objective with a guarantee is a, an agreement. Some of these slides, in fact, the one being projected at the moment, talks about guarantees. Uh, so this sounds simply that you're rebranding SLA in a different um, context. Yeah, uh, so let's go backwards. So difference between SLO and SLA, the way I see is in the level of granularity. Since SLAs are more at the service level that um, you would, when the service is deployed, you say, hey, this is my SLA and for the lifetime of my service, I want this kind of agreement. But when it comes down to SLO, it is on per flow basis, then you're responsible for entire flow to behave in a certain manner. And you could have multiple flows in a particular service. They can come and go at any time. So the granularity is different in terms of SLA and SLOs in my mind. And uh, so I don't see any problem with that. And your first question was, uh, how do we align it with the existing work? In fact, the definition what we have here, at least with the enhanced VPN document, it is very much aligned with just few tweaks where we found, we felt that it should be done that way, where we wanted to tweak it. but. The starting definition was, in fact, from enhanced VPN, and people who are working on those jobs helped us resolve the text here. And the question between network slices and transport slices, the simple answer is that network slices itself, it goes back to our second um, last slides where we last slide where we talked about other slices and transport slices. So for us, you could have different components in network slices, but here we are only concerned with the technologies that are being worked on in the ITF domain, and that is why the term transport is used, so that we can leverage the work related to connectivity. That actually comes a lot of work comes from the T's group. Sure, and I can add uh, one more item here. This is Reza speaking. So it is we decided that the terminology is very important. End-to-end -end network slicing, as this picture shows contains a group of 
transport slices, and we don't call it transport network slice or other terminology. The terminology that we use specifically, we call it transport slice. So this one too many is a characteristic. Also, end-to-end -end network slice has other slices, depends on the use case, depends on the technology, as we mentioned in 5G, this OS, other slices are RAN slice or uh, core slice. So the terminology that we use, I guess a short summary, even the title of the draft says, IETF definition of the transfer slice. And we wanna be make sure that this very consistently use this term, we are not using any other term, any draft clearly described. There are uh, some STOs using sub slice, slice subnet and others by clearly define why we use and we were very consistent throughout the document using the term transfer slice and nothing. So thank you, Kiran and Reza. Um, just to note that your your comprehensive answers uh, entirely failed to satisfy me on all three points. So um, we'll take this to email discussions. Please, please make sure that the document is updated to reflect because, you know, we don't, that's the way to capture the conversation. Just so you know, you have four more in queue and I've cut the queue after that so that we allow some time for discussion, hopefully after the next design team presentation. Hamain? Uh, hello, uh, this is Hamain and uh, just uh, two more very small additional points after Adrian. The first one is on the very beginning, I think the definition of transport slice is claimed to be logical and technology agnostic. But uh, the question is about whether all the slice must have a kind of TE feature, traffic engineering. Maybe I can answer that, uh, Kiran, if you don't mind. <laughs> The, as you mentioned, transfer slice is a logical description of the connectivity basics. Whether or not the implementation or realization of a transfer slice needs TE, this is just a northbound to southbound mapping. So at the top level, the transfer slice describes the connectivity plus SLO that that connection should contain. How it is realized in the network, maybe we use it using TE technology or operator decides to realize a different way. So the TE, in the short summary, the TE is basically the technology related for realization. It, is, it can be used, definitely can be used, but based on the definition of the transfer slice from Northbound, that it just describes connectivity plus SLA requirement that's needed. Okay. Okay, thanks. And the second question is about another terminology endpoints. So actually, uh, this is a very, how to say, uh, widely used the term when we talk about connections there are endpoints when we talk about tunnels paths and uh, also slides we have endpoints as well so uh, i'm wondering whether we can suggest uh, using very specific say transport slice endpoints in the in the context to make sure that we don't uh, mess up with other kind of endpoints uh, but when I read the draft, uh, I also say I also see that the endpoint is uh, categorized into transport type and service type. So, so I'm not sure how to uh, better organize this. But please consider the relationship between endpoints. But it's just a short summary of endpoint. We had a long discussion at the beginning. You know, at ITF right now, in different contexts, there are terminology like access point, termination point, uh, the, you know, end point. So we went through the whole cycle of this name. Uh, and I remember this was the first meeting that we had and we came up with the end point. So we try to be very specific and clear. If it is not the case, we work on the draft, but basically this is a short summary of why we came up with this end point. And what you say is absolutely correct. There is no black and white description here. You can, define it 
either of those and logically it's correct but anyway this is the reason that we use endpoints uh, uh, yeah i'm not a bit, uh, 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 yeah i'm not asking for a very explicit uh definition it's hard for 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 a really endpoints but because it's a kind of relative concept uh what has been in my mind is that, uh, for example, mapping some of the transport slice endpoints to another kind of endpoints is a kind of uh, uh, logic somewhere. But it may vary uh, per application or per implementation. But if you have anything specific, it would be great if you can send the mailing list and definitely it, take a look at it. Yeah, if you explain it through an example, we can refine the text. Okay, we'll do. We have uh, Italo next in the queue. Can you go to slide eight, please? Yeah, yeah here I'm a little bit uh, confused uh, by slide eight uh, and nine and ten. So my understanding of slide uh, then is that the network slice uh, the, you have an end-to-end -end slice uh, which can be composed by different sli uh, slice slices and one of them can be a transport slice uh, and then the transport slice uh, uh, gets implemented uh, within a network which can be one or multiple so i don't understand why in this case we have uh, the transport slice which is further decomposed is to uh, stitch the or hierarchical transport slices uh, looks like this is more uh, implementation not uh, uh, not transport yes. slices. Yes, so transport slices, uh, that's what I said that in one of the previous thing that there is a duality concept to the slices. It is not just the description of the slice that a customer wants. In the end, you have to realize it into the network. And how you realize into network is dependent on the kind of technology you have used in your underlying network. And there could be different kind of technologies together. It is not an, a single end-to-end -end tunnel, the way we no, are- I, I, I agree. So what, what I would say is that I have, in this figure, I have transport slice one, which is a transport slice. Uh, and then there are uh, other technologies uh, which are implementing uh, uh, the, 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 this transport slice in one. And transport slice one can be not a one end to end tunnel. You can have uh, two tunnels stitched together or even hierarchical tunnels. Yes, I see that. that that technologies and the term that is used in 5G and other groups is sub slices. We chose not to use the term sub slice and just build from the concatenation or the vertical aggregation of the slices as we go up or horizontally. So that's the main difference here. So you do see the concept of sub slices in other STUs. We don't use that terminology. One more thing that here is it necessarily doesn't mean that technology should be different. So assume everything in this picture is segment routing. So the whole idea here is a transport slice can be realized by a specific service slash tunnel slash path or with another transport slice. This is the idea. Obviously, if you have different technology, so this is another use case of this uh, picture, but it's a combination of various technology or various artifacts you already have in the network. You already created transfer slice in part of the network group. Can you use it to realize another transfer slice on top of it? So this oh, yeah. is so the idea. So basically, you see a hierarchical, uh, recursive hierarchical between transport slices. Sure, we, di we didn't want to use the term quote unquote hierarchical because that one maybe has different annotation. So we came up with this from term, but you can yeah, think about that on logically. Yes, yeah, logically, whatever you said is correct. But if you go, for example, to slide number nine, uh, I could request a slice between endpoint one one and endpoint two one, and then I can translate this slide into two tunnels, uh, one in network one and one in network P, without creating other slices. Yeah, so that is a realization part that you want to do. Obviously, you can do it. So, but you, if you already have a transfer slice in network one, you can reuse it. So, this is the idea okay. behind I that see. to be That's generic clear. and. Okay. Uh, okay. Then you yeah, have the challenge of scalability that for between every endpoint, you will have to define a single logical wire. And what we wanted to do was represent it as a network. So, the thing on the top is one slice in itself. 
with the same SLO. Okay, so we have uh, two more in queue, Eric and then Jay. Uh, keep in mind, um, this is both for the question and for the response that we do have the list to use and we do have other uh, topics that we want to hope to get to today. So um, with that in mind, Eric. Yeah, I can make my point really briefly. I just wanted to uh, address um, some of the issues that were raised earlier about some of the specific content in the draft. I, I think it's important at this early stage that a lot of the discussion that was involved in stuff like that gets some airtime. Um, I, ultimately, this is a definitions draft, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, with, between recommendations from the working group and various other things, we can kind of cut down the some of the discussion text uh, to much more of a summary and, and have actually uh, a really clear distinction between what's the definitions in the definitions draft and, and what's the background. Um, and, and, and I think that will help to improve both the readability and the acceptability of the draft. And I, I think just at this point, we need to sort of have some of that discussion. Early. And that's it. Sure. Yeah. So I just want to reply to what uh, Joe mentioned, the uh, question about isolation in the, uh, his comments. Basically, I think uh, isolation actually was not uh, invented by this document, and we can see isolation mentioned in several previous documents about the VPN requirements and the framework, such as the data isolation or the isolation of routing. Uh, you're breaking up, G. Okay. I think you lost G. Though. You broke up a little bit, but I think your comment was that isolation is not unique to this document nor invented by this document and it shows in other documents. Yeah, and that's correct. And in fact, we, after a lot of um, inputs and feedback from authors who were working on enhanced VPN and ACTN documents, this discussion was included and we found it relevant. So, to me, it's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so, I think we're ready to move on to the framework um, uh, framework. Part. Uh, also, I'll note that uh, we I cut the queue. I'm hoping we'll have a little bit of time after this one. So if you have additional comments, feel free to um, uh, make it after uh, get the, the discussion on the framework document. Or, of course, send it to the list. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting now. This is uh, Eric Gray from Erickson. Um, John Drake and I are the editors for this draft, but we have gotten almost all the work from other places, either from contributors or from other drafts. Um, so let's next slide. Um, so Yari provided us a skeleton late last year, and that was reviewed by the design team during at least one, probably two conference calls. And then uh, we, one of the things that came out of that was John Drake had said that we could probably get a lot of this text from, for, for example, from the enhanced VPN draft. And so we, um, John volunteered to, to actually bring that text out and organize it into the outline. And so we did that. Um, I loaded it down with a raft of comments and some of the things that were really not appropriate for this particular type of draft and so on. And then we had a lot of comments from other people. So. Um, we, in fact, we had some some comments on relationship between this draft and the uh, uh, enhanced VPN draft uh, from Zhu Feng and Ji, and um, then we were appointed as editors. Uh, we volunteered, or I volunteered us, and Yari said okay. And then um, so we got a bunch of comments from Drew that actually put in as a pull request. As a lot of the initial work is being done in this draft and in the uh, definitions draft in GitHub. And so we got a pull request uh, from Drew Doty that uh, we ended up putting in a different section than he had proposed, but we used a lot of that. And we had a ton of text proposed by Razor Rakuis, a lot of which we did end up using. Um, we had a, a number of other comments from other people in the design team. So if you look at the, the draft, we're basically listing the, the 
you know, the active members of the design team, which is quite a list, as uh, co-authors. The next, next slide. So, uh, in, in in introducing this draft, I mean, it's important to understand that this is a framework draft. This is sort of like here's the background, here's the problem space. It's not about uh, requirements at this point. It's not about architecture. Although in both cases, um, there there will be some you know limited uh, connections. For example, we re refer to an architecture in the enhanced PTN. Refer to uh, the ACTN work. Um, we uh, don't include requirements language, at least not on purpose. We and we do not have the reference to BCP 14, 2119, and 8140, whatever it is. Um, we have uh, an interesting error uh, spelling correction here on the second sub bullet here. So this is supposed to be implementation and technology agnostic. It's not supposed to be implantation. Um, and they, they, but they are talked about at a, at a high level. It's appropriate for a framework draft. And we include examples uh, from technologies. And then uh, this introduction provides the, the background, and this is supposed to be ran on all caps. Uh, somebody spelled correct there. It, it wasn't intended. And, um, and that's as an example, because there we recognize that there are other applications that are crying out to use the term and, and concepts of network slicing. And then uh, we describe some applications and the, how they relate to transport slices. A, a word on transport slices, which came up during the definition draft. Um, the, the one one application in particular uses the term trans, transport network slices. Uh, but we are not talking about exactly what, for example, 3GPP talks about with the transport network slices. So we have sort of shortened the term you know, in, a, in hopes to kind of make a clear distinction. So next slide, please. Um, so there's a section on objectives. Uh, there's a section on framework, even though it's the framework draft, and there's uh, the section on applicability of ACTN. Um, so the objectives are, um, what the transport slices are and what a transport slice service is intended to provide. Um, what, what we need in the transport slice controller, for example, to make transport slices useful. And, and they are creating, modifying, and removing transport slices and monitoring the status and performance of, of uh, monitor, uh, transport slices. And that stuff is there. And then uh, the framework section provides a more specifics about a framework. It, we describe uh, the slices and the systems that they're part of. We just describe management and applications at a high level. And we talk about um, the need to have a way for a transport slice user to talk to a transport slice provider. And that is the transport slice controller and its northbound interface. And then uh, we have some underlying technology examples. And the section on uh, applicability, of, applicability of ACN, ACTN terminology to the terminology that we're using is sort of a mapping section. This is kind of an answer to an Adrian comment earlier. Um, and, and there's actually a figure in there provided by uh, Drew Doty that uh, shows the mapping. You know, these are the terms and, and concepts used in ACTN, and these are the corresponding terms and, and concepts used in this particular work. Next slide, please. Okay, then there's a section on considerations, which, among other things, incorporates the you know the boilerplate required uh, considerations like uh, security and IANA, and and now privacy, and then it also has the monitoring considerations, which is close to management considerations that, that is, has been included in a lot of drafts and RFCs, and so it's just lumped together in one consideration section with subheadings. Okay, next slide, please. So what we're hoping to do is request a working group adoption of the framework draft. Uh, there is a normative requirement on, in the work framework draft on the definitions draft. So um, if we were to adopt this draft, we'd have to agree sort of in advance that we will eventually, you know, if not right now, we will, we will um, 
adopt some version of a definition graph. I personally think it'd probably be a good idea to do them at the same time. That would be the way I would go with it. And then uh, the draft location is there. The current version is point oh, is dash zero three. Uh, the latest revision was a very minor revision. It picks a couple of typos and uh, update the reference to the definitions graph. Any questions, comments? This is uh, this is the last slide. I'm usually surprised that they given the size of the queue on the last one that we don't have a large queue on this one. Maybe people just haven't gotten to reading it like on the definition. Maybe it's because I fed the description to them from a fire hose. <laughs> so we don't have anyone in queue now, but we do have time. And um, we said that we would take questions on the whole design team now. Uh, so, uh, Eric, if you don't mind, uh, is, uh, we're going to open up to the wider conversation. Is that okay with you? Or, or do you want us to ha talk specifically about the adoption? Oh, since there was not anybody in the queue when we got to the end of this presentation, and there doesn't seem to be anybody jumping in it right now, I think we can just open it up. I'm going to go on mute for the meantime. Okay. Um, so, uh, at least one person had typed into Etherpad rather than coming to the queue after it was cut. If you'd like, um, please uh, join the queue now. Um, uh, all right, so we have Reza in queue. Yes, uh, just uh, uh, basically a summary of our request, and I think this was, was a great day uh, during the various discussion and meeting that we had. Uh, we wanted to go with the adoption of the, these two documents. I think this is uh, 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 important for us to at least if there is a strong objection not to do it, if we can go with the adoption. So this is basically the comment. And I think this is basically the resolution that we got from uh, agreement in the design team. And that was the position coming in, okay, understood. Any other comments? Okay. Um, I think based on the level of discussion, by the way, I didn't have a chance to, to sync with Pavan, so he can jump in, disagree. But based on the level of discussion, my inclination is to take a look at the um, emails, email comments that come out um, after this interim and maybe give people a little bit of time to, to get them out. You know, we don't respond instantaneous. And then uh, let's get those comments addressed first and then move to adoption. And it, it seems to make sense to me to move the, do the documents together. Um, so that, that's sort of where uh, I think we should go. Uh, Kira? So uh, where will the discussions take place on NSTT mailing list or on the T's? Yeah, T's, absolutely the design. The, uh, not the design team list is not the right place. It should be on the working group list. Okay, thanks. Um, Pavan, do you want to uh, add anything? Feel free to disagree. Uh, no, I mean, given the questions that came in after the uh, definitions presentation, I think we should uh, uh, we, we should weigh in the opinions that come in and then uh, proceed with to the next stage. Uh, yeah, let, let's have a discussion on the definitions sorted out and then. Yeah, so for the for the people that raised comments. Um, uh, please uh, try to continue the discussion on the list. Uh, authors, please try to address what you heard today uh, in your uh, next version and um, then address whatever else comes up on the list. And once you think you have a draft that's ready for adoption again, uh, please send a summary message to the T's working group, uh, obviously to the chairs also, saying here's how you resolve the issues and we think you're now ready to move forward. See whether that triggers a second round of discussions or whether if there's if it's uh, not a lot of responses, uh, we move to adoption. Uh, Fair okay. enough, uh, Luke. So we go through the comments uh, set together and uh, address them accordingly. Great. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay. Thanks to Amazon. Was that, a, was that a question? Sorry, this is Igor. 
I just uh, want to suggest to <coughs> take a look at all, on what uh, Joel has to say, okay, before we discuss the adoption. I think that's what we just agreed to. Okay. Uh, Dan King needed to leave. He typed at me who was going to present in his place, and I have forgotten who it is. Maybe it's me. Time. It's me, Italo. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Thanks, Italo. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. Okay. So, uh, over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Italo Buzzi from Away. I'm work. I'm presenting uh, uh, on behalf of the co-authors of this individual draft, uh, which are listed on the front page. Uh, next slide, please. What is the motivation of the, this slide? This document is basically trying to describe uh, some of the key use cases uh, where ACTN can be used to support uh, packet optical integration and uh, looking at what uh, uh, needs to be supported from both uh, the optical layer and the packet layer and how the two layers can be coordinated in a hierarchical architecture like ACTN. And therefore, we describe uh, how, uh, and then the intention is to basically do some uh, applicability statement or analysis of uh, which doc, which YAM model are are, uh, can be used between the MDSC and the packet and optical controllers and, and check whether we have any gaps. So if something is missing in the existing YAM models that uh, uh, will be useful to address these requirements. Uh, and whether there are additional issues to consider like operational and security. Next slide. The, uh, the use cases that we are currently describing are uh, three uh, are uh, seven into three categories. One is about the multi-layer topology coordination. So discovery of the topology and the and tunnels and services in the optical uh, and the IP layer and provisioning of links uh, or uh, um, parallel links like lag over the uh, optical layer or with or without pack constraints and adding or removing members from logical links, parallel links. And then we have other uh, set of required use cases about the multi-layer coordination. So once you have, have a failure, uh, uh, the, 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 the protection can happen in, uh, in between in, in different layers. So we check uh, the, the main uh, scenario that uh, requires coordination is uh, how to ensure resiliency when you have a maintenance uh, uh, events, so you want to do maintenance in uh, one layer, uh, what, what action should the other layer do? Or when you have a router port, port failure, which cannot be protected uh, by the, 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 only by the WDM. So in this case, you have to have the two layers to coordinate together to recover the traffic. And then we have also the possibility to, uh, that is required, uh, to set up services over packet optical and exploit uh, the multi-layer to uh, basically set up uh, the best uh, path uh, across the two layers to support some layer two or layer three service request. So how the two layers are coordinated, uh, so how the service request triggers a multi-layer path set up across the two layers. Next one. Okay, the reference architecture is basically trying to address both multi-domain multi and multi-layer. So we assume to have uh, an optical network, uh, two domains, two, two optical network domains and two IP network domains uh, controlled by four different PNCs uh, and all of them exposing a, a ACTN MPI interface to an MDSC, which is therefore responsible for both multi-domain and multi-layer uh, setup and topology discovery. Next one. So what what do we have? Okay, after the last uh, in the last uh, in the last two meetings, we had the two drafts which were uh, addressing the problem of applicability of ACTN to packet optical, and we have agreed to merge these two drafts into this draft. So the new the version 03 is merging also the content from the fair, former draft lead, uh, draft lead 00 that was presented a couple of meetings ago. And uh, what do we do in this moment? We discuss uh, how do we discover links and tunnels. Uh, in particular, we describe uh, and clarify the use uh, of the uh, T topology and the plug ID for the interdomain link discovery and how the plug ID can be used uh, and populated with the LLDP. And uh, we, uh, we uh, describe uh, uh, the different YAM models that are used uh, at the different MPI. In particular, we exploit uh, the advantage of the World Dino ITF that most of the models are common. So we show what are the models which can be, the same models can be applied, applicable to both optical and packets, and which models are specific for optical and which models are specific for packets. 
And then we are discussing also some uh, coordination when you create uh, layer two and layer three services using uh, the service model. Next one. What do we do? Well, okay, we have a lot of work in front of us. We are capturing uh, uh, the, all the uh, open issues on, uh, on the GitHub area. And what uh, some of the open issues that we are going to address are uh, um, uh, cleaning up a little bit the text. So at this moment in time, we just pull out the text from the draft leave. We have to a little bit align to make it more than one document rather than two documents put into one. <laughs> A container, and uh, uh, we will. Uh, we are discussing some other options versus uh, uh, in addition to LLDP to discover interdomain links. Uh, and we are uh, the, we have a, a requirement from operators to uh, to discover some uh, uh, data about inventory, and we have trying to understand uh, uh, what is missing and uh, what what is the real requirement. Uh, and maybe we have to, and we have to do more work on the operational and security considerations. So it's just an initial. Work. Next one. What, what is the question? Okay, okay. Everybody is uh, is welcome to join this work, uh, but we are wondering whether do you think uh, this document is useful for the TIS working group? So whether whether the TIS working group should basically work on describing these key use cases and analyze how ACTN can be used to address them. And if you think it is useful, maybe we can adopt. Uh, this document as a working group document and uh, move the change control to the working group. Uh, question and comments are welcome. Thank you. Uh, I don't see anyone in the uh, uh, in the queue, and it's a little hard to gauge the the room. Um, uh, we talked about maybe doing a uh, virtual hum or an adoption. Uh, we, we're trying a, a, a virtual hum in, in uh, NetMod. We'll see how that goes. Um, and so uh, Pavan and I will, will talk and uh, uh, either do an adoption or, or a virtual hum. Okay, good. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Um, assuming we don't have anyone uh, uh, anyone in the queue? Shusong, I think you're next. Hi. Hi. Good. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, okay. good. Uh, hi, this is Shusong. Good. <laughs> this is Shusong. I will present our work about 5G end to end network slice mapping from the view of transport network, representing other orders of this draft. Uh, and other authors are listed in this page. Uh, next slide, please. Next one, yeah. Uh, driven by the new requirements of 5G, the concept of network slicing is introduced to provide a logical network with specific capabilities and characteristics, uh, which has already been discussed in the previous uh, presentations. Uh, different applications with different requirements can use different network slices. Generally, a 5G end-to-end -end network slice is composed of three major parts, the radio access network, transport network, and the core network. Uh, so when we try to build up a 5G end-to-end -end network slice, how to establish the mapping relationship between the transport network and the mobile network becomes very important and Overdraft is trying to solve this problem. Uh, next, slide. next slide, please. Yes, uh, the core of end-to-end uh, -end network slice mapping is to find the relationship of different network slice related identifiers. There are a lot of identifiers and we list these identifiers in this page. Some of them have already been defined in 3GPP and some of them is introduced by this document. Uh, these identifiers could be used in management plan, control plan, and the, or data plan. Um, uh, first is the NSI. 
means network slice instance, which is end-to-end -end network slice defined in management plan. And NSSI means network subnet instance, which is the network instance defined in the management plan of subnetwork. For example, the ANNSSI and the CNNSSI. Uh, next is TNNSSI means a transport network slice instance, which is the network slice defined in the management plan of transport network. The concept of TNNSSI is uh, introduced by Overdraft, and it follows the terminologies in 3GPP, just like AN and CN. Uh, the next is the SNSSAI, means single network slice selection assistance information, which could be used as end-to-end uh, -end network slice identifier in control plan. Uh, TNSII means transport network slice interworking identifier, which is used for mapping end-to-end -end network slice into transport network slice in data plan. TNS the TNSII is a concept introduced by this document. Uh, and also we introduce another concept, it is TNSI, uh, means transport network slice identifier uh, that is used for network slice identification inside the uh, transport network of data plan. Uh, actually, the description of some concepts from 3GPP in this page may not very uh, precise because some of them are even not clearly defined in 3GPP yet. Uh, but we have tried our best to read the documents of 3GPP and talk with 3GPP people to make sure that these concepts are used properly in our document. And uh, we see that having, we have defined some new concepts including TNNSSI, TNSII, or TNN. Uh, TNSI. It doesn't mean that we uh, this document will define new uh, signaling protocols or encapsulations. It is just for convenience uh, of description uh, about the procedure of network slice mapping. Okay, next slide. Mm. Uh, there have already been some works in 3GPP about end-to-end -end network slicing, uh, but the view of transport network is missing. This document provides the supplementations and uh, covers, tries to cover the missing part. Uh, the overview of the end-to-end -end network slice mapping is shown in this picture. Uh, in the management plan, each domain including AN, TN, and CN, will set up subnet network slice to satisfy the requirement of end-to-end -end network slice. Uh, in control plan, an application will, uh, is supposed to have some uh, specified service will select the proper end-to-end -end network slice when the PDO session is set up, which is not uh, relevant to the transport network directly. It, it happens in the, uh, between the AN and the CN. And in data plan, when a packet goes through the edge node of each domain, uh, there should be some identifiers uh, inside the packet to map it from one subdomain network slice to the other in order to make sure the end-to-end -end network slice is provided. Uh, so TNSII is introduced here for slice mapping data plan. And the following slides show the details of the mapping procedure. Uh, next page. Yes. Uh, here is the procedure. Uh, in the management plan, NSMF, receives the packet, uh, receives the network slice request from CSMF. NSMF split the NSI requirements to each NSSI, including ANNSSI, CNNSSI, and TNSSI. And NSMF sends the transport network slice requirement to TNNSSMF. TNNSMF uh, allocates TNNSSI and sends the result to NSMF. NSMF acquires the mapping relationship between NSI identifier and TNNSSI identifier. Also, NSMF maintains the mapping relationship between the NSI and SNSSAI. 
and also the mapping relationship between TNNSSI and the TNSII. Sorry, it, is, it seems a little complex, uh, which could be used to set up mapping relationship finally between SNSSAI and TNSII. The next slide. Uh, maybe we, we uh, skip one. There's another page. Uh, yes. And in control plan, the data plan, when a PDO session is set up between AN and CN, and SSAI is selected for PDO session in mobile network, uh, the AN and the CN edge nodes encapsulate the packet using the TNSII. Uh, we have uh, just uh, defined according to the uh, SNSSAI. The edge node of the transport network uh, parses the TNSII in the packet and maps the packet to a transport network slice. Uh, it may encapsulate the TNSI into the packet and the nodes inside the transport network forward the packet inside the corresponding uh, transport network slice based on the TNSI. Next slide. Uh, here, we try to list all the uh, TNSSI options for data plan. Uh, it is used in the packet between a mobile network and transport network. So uh, the encapsulation should be visible for a transport network. In there two, maybe we can use VLID. In there three, uh, we can use uh, DSAP, uh, IP destination address SRV6, uh, or even IPv6 extension headers or uh, MPS label. Uh, upper layer, maybe uh, we also consider UDP source port, which is uh, mentioned in other uh, relevant uh, documents. Actually, here we just list all the possible options for. Uh, mm, TNSII, but uh, there is no preference for these options, and uh, we just try to uh, list all of them and give some technical considerations for each option. And next slide. Okay, uh, go back to the motivation of this document, why we write this document. Uh, first, this is not a standard track document. Uh, this is informational. And we just want to give some guidance for service providers about how to deploy 5G end-to-end -end network slicing. Uh, and we try to promote cooperation between IETF and 3GPP in the topic uh, of end-to-end -end network slicing and also help to discover uh, whether there are gaps in uh, implementing end-to-end uh, -end network slice mapping. Uh, next slide. Uh, what is the that next? Uh, first, uh, we published this uh, document in TEAS working group, but uh, we are not sure whether this is a proper home for this draft. So we are still trying to find a proper home for this topic and this draft. Uh, it will be great if uh, people in TEAS uh, will be interested in this topic. Uh, especially the design team for Network Slice uh, is in TIS working group. So uh, maybe TIS is a very good choice for us. And also we still uh, are collecting more feedback from working group and the uh, operators. And we will revise the draft based on the comments. Okay. I think this is the last page. Uh, can you go to a slide for uh, just a clarification based on the discussion that we had uh, previously for uh, uh, transport slides? And I just want to uh, map this picture mm -hmm. to whatever you see in there. So this terminology that is used here is heavily 3GPP. The term in a specific that it's concerning, you know, at least us, and it relates to tran transfer slides, is termed TNNSSMF, Network Sub Slice Management Function. Basically, this box mm -hmm. is the box that we call it transfer slice controller. So I'm trying to say that all the terminology that you see here 
it uh, basically should reference at least from the transfer side to whatever in the transfer slice we have the name of transfer slice you know using transport all the thing that's related to that so this is a general context and i want to make sure that at least for the audience when they see this picture northbound of the tn and ssmf which is nbi that we are referring uh, and uh, we, we will discuss that one momentarily. And southbound of that one is basically this box in the middle. So this is a general observation of this one, the terminology. If you want to continue with that, uh, in my opinion, it should reflect whatever is already discussed in uh, the NSDT. And the other comment here is that, in my opinion, uh, this is talking about the data path and how the traffic should map to various transfer slices based on the discussion that we had before. Is this TIS the best working group for this one? I don't think so. I think this is mainly related to DMM maybe, which basically you are using infrastructure that we are building here in your advantage to say what are the options and you summarize it in page seven which is correct you know all the things is applicable so basically one comment and one suggestion thank you uh thank you reza for your comment and question uh the first one about the terminology uh actually this is we have already considered that whether it is good to reuse or follow the terminology uh, from CGPP directly. Uh, you have just mentioned, just like the uh, NSSI or NSMF, they are all terminologies defined in CGPP. Maybe they are not uh, suitable for IETF people to, uh, to read. Uh, actually, we have already uh, mentioned in our draft about this question. Uh, we, we are open about um, how to define these terminologies. Uh, basically, the, the name is not the core uh, content of this draft. We just want to say the procedure. So uh, we just uh, reuse the uh, terminology from CJPP just for convenience in our uh, first or second version of this draft. If there have already been some uh, identification or terminologies defined in the working uh, in the the other document from the design team or from other people, uh, maybe after the adoption or uh, how to say uh, maybe we after we have come to agreement about these term uh, terminologies, we can use it in this document because uh, if. If what we have defined in design team haven't been accepted by other people, we use it in this document will also cause some confusion about uh, the, the meaning of each term terminology. So for convenience, we just reuse the yeah, really CGPP um, We're actually running really tight on time. So this is a good, um, you know, I, I think raise the point. We can talk about more on list. We have two more people in queue. Um, if they can raise their issue, we can address quickly and then um, move on. That would be great. Um, we're already, as I said, we're already over. Okay, okay. Uh, I think a brave uh, response for the second uh, question from Riza is whether it is suitable uh, to, for discuss this topic. We have to take it to the list or else we won't. Have oh, to okay, to okay, sure. okay, okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I, I really appreciate uh, this work because I think uh, the draft uh, hits the key problem for transport slicing about uh, the mapping issue. But uh, on slide page three, I'm a little bit shocked to see the kind of data plane because if we only talk about uh, the mapping between end-to-end -end network slice to the transport network, that would be still many layers between the transport, top of the transport uh, network and the data plane. And uh, given the fact that uh, usually the, the, the data plane is also multiple uh, technology, okay, I'm speaking as an optical expert. So given the data plane is multiple technology, uh, we may have different kind of mapping solutions and uh, we need to uh, organize uh, the, the, the physical network very carefully to to coordinate with with each other with each other and what has been raised in page four is only an example for packet 
but not for connection already. Uh, if you could uh, I agree. Maybe do for, for the work on this. Have time for anyone else, Eric? Yeah, just I, I wanted to make a real quick comment about the Reza's first part, and, and I know we're going to talk about that on the list. But what I, my comment will be, I think it needs to be talked about on the list, and if nobody else does, I'll start the conversation. Um, the other thing is, I have a clarification question about I think between slides and five and slide six or something like that, where we're talking about uh, a uh, network slice identifier and the possibility of having it included in the encapsulation in the transport uh, in the transport slice. So, um, are, it, it, are you talking about seeing some logical sense? Or are you talking about actually explicitly putting some sort of an identifier into an encapsulation? That because that would involve the developing a new uh, encapsulation, therefore a new technology. Uh, Alu, you want uh, you want me to answer directly or take it to me? Yeah, to be fair to the previous question, I think we have to have the same um, response, which is, can you uh, please take that question and respond it on, uh, to the list? All right, fine. Thank you. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, from the chair's point of view, yeah, the current focus for the working group is to get the design team documents uh, adopted. Uh, you can continue discussion of this document on the list. I think that we will revisit this after, revisit the next steps for this after uh, the design team documents get adopted. Okay, thank you. And please, all the questions uh, I haven't answered, please take it to the mailing list. We are open to discussions and welcome to other comments. Thank you. Yeah, so you, you should feel free to respond without waiting for the question to be sent because I've already asked the question. You can just respond right, right to the list. Okay, okay. I can respond it directly in the mailing list. Thank you. Thank you for the questions and the comments. Thank you. You're up. Thank you, Charles. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes, and if you can try to do it in five to seven minutes, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'll take time. Um, okay, uh, so if you can just focus on the changes as opposed to running through the solution again, that would be great. Okay, okay. okay so this is uh, the job about the RCBP extension for uh, support of uh, proactive protection. So, next page, please. Yeah, so the main idea of this draft is that uh, we uh, uh, introduce a new uh, protection method named uh, proactive protection, which means that uh, when we pro predict a failure, then we will, uh, before re the, the failure happens, we will create the um, protecting LSPs for this LSP. So in this case, we don't need to have twice resource for the whole lifetime of the LSP. And the main changes are include the first one is uh, we move the, this job from the CCAMP to uh, TIS as agreed by uh, TIS chairs in the last ITF meeting. And the second change is that we uh, we change to use the explicit style for the tearing down of the predicting SPs if the uh, predictive, uh, predictive failure at last doesn't happen. And the last uh, change is that we are uh, we add a um, dubbing from ETR, ETRI as one of the authors uh, because of his help on the improving of the solutions. Uh, okay, next page, please. Yeah, so here I want to uh, clarify what, what is the failure prediction. So um, actually, be, before a, a physical failure happens, there, there will be always some indications, for example, uh, the the some of the value of the parameters are changing very quickly, as shown in this picture. But the uh, the uh, one of the concept of difference between the predictive failure and the uh, traditional SD or SF is that uh, the uh, predictive failure happens uh, that it that is still under the threshold of SD and SF. That means that, that there is still no impact on the traffic of SP. So at the uh, source, uh, at the designation end of the SP, it cannot detect this kind of uh, predictive failure. So that's the reason why we need this kind of uh, notifications. Okay, so next page, please. 
Yeah, so this is the main idea of the protect, um, proactive protection. So before T1, uh, be, before T1, uh, we only created the working uh, working SP, and at T1, when we predicted that a failure will be happen in the uh, very near, then we will create a, a protecting SP at this at the uh, at T1 at this moment, and then at T2 or T3. Uh, then if the uh, real SD or S have happened, then we can uh, trigger the one plus one or one by one protection switch to protect the, the SP. So this is the main idea. Uh, next page, please. Yeah, there is another case that, uh, for example, if the uh, see the top right uh, of the slice, uh, if the digger is going near, to the fiber and then going away, so the the, the node may detect the uh, the threat to the fiber to, to the fiber uh, will disappear. Then the node the intermediate node can notify the source node to to uh, to tear down the protection uh, protecting LSP to save the resource at uh, T two. Okay, next page, please. Uh, for the is, uh, protocol extension, it's a uh, uh, simple. Uh, the what the first extension is that we add two two bits to the protection object to indicate the each node. Uh, uh, sorry, to uh, enable each node to start the prediction function to uh, predict failure. Uh, one one of the one of the bit is for the end to end pro, uh, protection. And the other bit is for the segment protection. And yeah, next page, please. And the second extension is about the notification. So set, for example, if the node B uh, in, the, in the picture uh, at T1, it, it predicted a failure, then it need to notify the source node, node A, about this predicted failure. And uh, in this notif notification, two messages are carried. One is the, the predictive failure ID, uh, and the other is the cause of the predictive failure in the test format. So this message will trigger the source node A to uh, start creating the protecting SP. One minute. One minute. OK, OK. OK, so next page, please. The second uh, extension is uh, for the notification is that uh, if node B finds that the predict failure is not it is not cleared, then it will be notified the node A this event, and the node A can tear down the uh, predict uh, the protecting LSP to save the resource. Please note that this uh, option is uh, this this uh, tearing down is uh, optional, depending on the uh, policy of uh, in the node A. Okay, next page, please. Yes. Okay, so um, next step, we will continue to work on the solution and uh, your comments are always welcome to help us on the uh, improving of the solution. Thank you. We, we have Matt on the chat. Yeah, thanks. Um, can you actually signal the protecting LSP and get the data plane programmed end to end fast enough for this to be useful. That they're not really introducing any new protection mechanisms here. Uh, no, I'm, I'm asking, I, I know they're not introducing new mechanisms. I'm just kind of, you know, uh, how long do you have to respond to your early warning of a failure compared to the time it takes to set up a protecting LSP? Yeah, normally, uh, uh, I think you should uh, take the response to the list if you don't mind. Um, okay. uh, yeah. one, uh, one more quick. Uh, please just go ahead and respond. Uh, Pavan, go ahead. One uh, additional point. Uh, you are, uh, they, in terms of protocol extensions, you are defining two uh, flags in the error, error mm -hmm. spec, and then uh, the two flags in the protection object. Uh, the two flags that you are, you are asking for in the protection object, those typically, uh, 
uh, are carried in the LSP attribute when you are, when you are trying to characterize uh, the attribute for an end to end path. LSP attribute is uh, the object that we. You can respond to this comment on the list, but yeah, take that into consideration. We're ready for the last uh, slot, and you have uh, uh, exactly five minutes, including question time. Sorry uh, about squeezing that. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I'm here to represent, uh, uh, my name is Bo, I'm here to represent a uh, transport slice model uh, representing the other authors. Actually, this uh, draft uh, is about, uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is, uh, this draft is uh, right. Uh, we are trying to define the echo to the uh, transfer slice definition, the, de the design team's uh, output. Like uh, they already gave some uh, definition about transfer slice. So uh, we are thinking, considering, and also the slice definition framework uh, in quite stable. So we are thinking uh, that maybe it's the right time to define the NBI uh, transfer slice northbound interface young model. We are thinking of, of from the several uh, way to define this, like from uh, the, the definition has described the transport slice is abstract topology. And also they have some as a policy, they just present it. And also uh, framework mentioned uh, this NBI model should not only uh, support the, for the configuration, to do some like endpoint um, information and also status for this uh, transfer slice. So next slide, please. Uh, yes, this one. Uh, 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 considering of the, like designing this uh, northbound interface young model, we are thinking, uh, and given the definition gave some uh, nature of the transport slice definition, like uh, this young model should be abstract one and should be technology independent. So we are thinking uh, whether there are some existing model can fit into uh, this uh, transport slice model definition. So we, are, we have considered about the like WIM model, uh, VM model is a virtual network. It has been doing some abstraction, but when we uh, like when when we uh, uh, dip a little of detail, we I think uh, we find that uh, this VM model you actually they use a T topology model to to use together. Uh, this VM is actually an extra abstract node of a T topology, so. We are thinking uh, then this may relate with some realization given uh, the definition draft uh, has just presented. Um, they also give some clarification that they don't want to be T uh, tight, uh, bound uh, tightly. So we also think, uh, also consider about the 8345. It's a very uh, abstract uh, network topology model. And it, but uh, we also, uh, when we uh, uh, when we analyze it, we think uh, it's uh, described the fully uh, detailed network topology. So we also think uh, when when we try to augmenting this model, we also face some complexity. So uh, given we have those uh, analysis, so the authors uh, prefer to. Is, uh, define a totally independent model to uh, to to show the customer view of this uh, transport slice. So next slide, please. Uh, this uh, is the the current uh, transport slice model components, and also we are thinking uh, what kind of customer view of this transport slice is. So we are trying to define that uh, like. Uh, 
this is a transfer slice example in the uh, right-hand side. Like uh, there will be endpoints that will be linked uh, to the customer sites. So in this way, customer site uh, customer doesn't need to uh, like be uh, involved into the details of the transfer network in realization like those tunnels or VPNs. They could only uh, care about uh, how their endpoints being connected and how can their transfer like uh, SO being uh, policy being defined and then uh, like whether if they're they have some different SIO we can use uh, transfer slice uh, as a group to be, uh, to to do that so we also give the definition about these different components in the left hand side so uh, the like transfer slice endpoint is a logical endpoint uh, identify to uh, identify the access point and TS member is a logical connection between any two TS endpoints. It's a point-to-point -point and unidirection. Uh, it's, uh, it's a logical one and also the SL group. I don't touch the, I, I don't want to touch the detail of that so far given I, I, I have not so much time left. And next please. Please. Out of, you're actually out of time, so maybe jump yeah. To the last slide. I will jump to the like the open issues right now. Uh, uh, yes, uh, lecture. We we actually have some discussion in the design team. The right now we have some uh, like uh, this modeling designing uh, issues, like uh, whether it's uh, it's a brand new model or augmented model based on existing ATF model. So this is a question we like to hear from the working group. Uh, and next one is transfer slice endpoint definition. We we also uh, give some uh, definition in the draft, so you can take a look on that if you have other uh, uh, thoughts. And the other thing is whether the transfer slice should support different SLO in the same slice. And I, I think Eric Gray also proposed that issue to the design team. So uh, and. He he also uh, suggested that the definition draft can 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 do this uh, whether the different SLO is is needs to be met in a single slice. So this is uh, the the current uh, issues we uh, we have been discussed, but we we are still in discussion. So uh, right now, I think this is a very initial draft. So we are here to collect feedback from the. Uh, working group to see uh, if we 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 are welcome everyone have review our draft and give up some comments on this. Thank you Thanks. very much for thank you very much for presenting the work. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some questions. We unfortunately don't have time, but it, you know yeah. as you said, you're here to generate interest, and I think you've done that. And we ask mm -hmm. for the discussion to go to the list, and <clears throat> really appreciate uh, the contribution. Uh, of you and also of everyone else's work that was uh, reviewed today and of course all the, the working group participants. Uh, with that, we are actually uh, out of time, a couple of minutes over. Um, based on the working group discussions uh, on the list, we can all schedule another interim uh, no matter what's going on with 108. And um, uh, if you are interested in interim, feel free to contact the chairs. Uh, feel free to also send it to the list. Um, we don't mind uh, uh, having those discussions publicly, but if you want to do it privately, that's okay too. Um, so thank you all. I really appreciate it. Uh, Pavan, anything you want to add? Uh, thank you. Hope to see you all in person sooner than later. Bye now. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.